What is up, everybody? You got him, Mama? Hi. He's looking. Uh, welcome to the Wrestling Word. This is the... What is today? 15th? Is today the 15th? Today's the 15th um, of March. And it's the day before everyone celebrates Stone Cold. Um, so, yeah, it's the 15th of March. I don't celebrate on... I never, I never liked the whole Austin 316 thing. It seemed like a mockery to me. But um, it's a controversial thing right off the bat, right? But I did like Steve Austin. I didn't like Stone Cold. I just... The whole Austin 316 thing. Yeah. But um, welcome, everybody, to the show. Um, it's another edition of The Wrestling Word. I'm going to open some stuff. I'm gonna. I got the babies in here. I got Mama, Clyde's in here with me, and um, they may chime in. You may hear them chime in some. And I'm gonna um, talk about some stuff from wrestling this week. I got some stuff to show, and I got another special guest. Oh, uh, Mama, can we shut that or just watch? Let's see, she's she's a showrunner, man. She's a good one. She's so. I love you, Mama. Just want to make sure. I love you too. Um, roses. If you got a local roses near you, <laughs> <laughs> if you got a local roses, uh, is it wholesale store, discount store? I don't know. You can get one of these guys. Discount. Knock off Hulk Hogan. Oh, uh, uh, right off the bat. He wants yeah. the karate guy. Of course he does. Um. I, I mean, that's probably fine. I just make sure what's the tag. You can get a knockoff Hulk Hogan, Terry Bollea. That looks like Wolfman from that angle. Look at that. That's going to be a good thumbnail right there. <laughs> ah, well, you know something, brother. Um, and his... Uh, anyway, I don't know why I'm showing this so much, but I overpaid for this. This was at $4.99. Uh, but look at that. Stretch Armstrong vibes, dude. Back in the day. He does not have the... Uh, and I like I like messing with stuff like this while I'm working. You know? Because I, I do a lot of talking, so I'm just, you know, having to fiddle around with something. Or fidget, as the kids call it now. But look at that, man. Look at that. Have, look, look, at that. look at that morbid. They have one short arm, one long arm. However you want to do it, folks. This, this quality... Quality streaming here that we do on this show that I'm showing you today. Um, so, and he's, I, it reminds me of the old Stretch Armstrong, just in a little version, but he actually is filled with sand. See? Some ASMR. You get all kinds of stuff here on this uh, show. So, anyway, that's our, that's our guy. I'm going to set him, stand him up over there today. He's our mascot for the show. Um, Wrestling this week. Uh, let's talk about it. Monday Night Raw. Um, man, what a match. What a match uh, between Chad Gable and Sami Zayn. It makes you wonder if... I was sitting there thinking, like, I don't really know who to cheer for. Like, at one point I want Chad Gable because it's his first time uh, going for... A, he's never had a singles title, as they pointed out. And then on the other hand, it's like, would it be right to leave Sami Zayn out of a big picture spot, you know, considering where he was last year? Um, that was a tough call. Was it the right one to go ahead and let Sami win? I think so. But man, Chad Gable still deserves something huge. He really does. Uh, it wouldn't have been right. Here's the thing. Sami could take the loss to Gunther at WrestleMania, I think, better than Chad would be able to. So, Gable, he still needs some high spot. Maybe it's going to be in the tag team thing. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but he needs a high spot. Just notice Gizmo's always in the wrestling videos, too. That's pretty cool. And Elvis there on the end. And Batman and Sonic. and We got a whole plethora of nerdy. A whole barrage, I think, is the... I don't know. Um... So I, I, I think in the long run, uh, if Chad Gable would have lost to Gunther at uh, WrestleMania, maybe that 
would have been worse than him just not even fighting Gunther at all. Because we already know uh, what they're capable of doing there. So, um, I think that was my only big thing I took out of this week's wrestling with WWE. Um, and I'm going to try to do these once a week. I think it's what I'm going to try to do. Uh, and just kind of go over everything. Because um, I guess you guys like these videos. TikTok always uh, seems to, to respond well to them. And of course, everywhere else. And I love talking about wrestling. It's uh, other than, you know, music. And it's right on par with music. This is one of my things I love. So we try to do this more often. And maybe just shorter videos. Um, rather than the long boys we've been doing. But anyway, that didn't sound right. Mama laughed at that. So, the long videos. Long boys. I'm getting They're a... also called Slim Jim. Yep, that's her nickname, Slim Jim. And that's, uh, you know, I mean, the auto thing, I guess. I'm adopting your old way of talking. Long uh, boy. A long boy. Uh, there were some repeat matches. And again, I want y'all to, I want to preface this with... Because not everybody knows this. I, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm not old, but I'm not young. Okay, I'll say it like that. Um, I'm probably younger than you would think, but I'll say it like that because I look old. Look old and grizzled and worn up and hung up and rode hard and hanging on a clothesline drying. But I'm not that old. But I am old enough to say that I think my opinion on wrestling probably counts for a lot because I've watched it literally since I was Clyde's age, my son's age. And, and he's, I mean, literally since birth, so I can for sure remember, you know, I have, well, I don't say I remember, but I can for sure pinpoint all the way back to how I was like three, you know, with the same with music. Um, so it's been involved forever. And, and I got a big opinion on a lot of stuff with wrestling. Spent a lot of free time watching it and watching old stuff and, so that's kind of where I'm coming from. Uh, everybody's got an opinion on something, though. Um, the only other stuff that I had written down for, for WWE, because I kept notes this week, guys. I'm going to start taking notes on stuff I want to talk about in the show, uh, rather than just being random. We're going to we're gonna organize this a little better. Producer Bill is going to help us out and get this show on track with the Lonely Hearts Club, the wrestling word. Um, I don't care about watching Nia Jax and, and Becky Lynch uh, again. I know that's not the match that we saw, but WB is guilty of showing a lot of the same matches over, so it's a lot of fast-forwarding. Uh, if I've seen them fight a few times, if I've seen them fight in multiple different kinds of matches, whatever. Drew McIntyre, Jey Uso, they fought again. But we're going to get into that. The big thing I want to talk about this week is the shirt I'm wearing, which this is going to seem contradictory. It's AEW. This came from the grab bag from the last video, AEW Live shirt. I think it says live somewhere. There it is. Um, I'm going to be voicing a strong opinion on AEW today, even while I'm wearing their shirt. Because it is wrestling. I do love wrestling. I support wrestling companies and all that. But AEW, man, come on. There's a lot of stuff to point out. And I, I love it all. I watch, I watch TNA. I watch... Um, uh, New Japan occasionally, not much. I watch... Uh, uh, AEW, WWE, um, MLW, when I can, when it's on. I watch World of R Women of Wrestling Impact. occasionally. So. Huh? Impact, Impact is TNA now, yep. See, Mama knows. Well, Mama's, wearing, like Mama's, wearing a, like, Mama's wearing Impact. Mama's wearing an FTR old. shirt. I'm going to show them I'm gonna show them your FTR shirt. Is that cool? Let me show you guys. Look at this. You guys can see all my junk here. Art, nice set. Look at that. Me and Clyde are tearing up toys over here. It's on my, uh, on my vintage guys there in front. That cool FTR shirt. I was, I was, I got that and I said, I don't need another FTR shirt. But she liked it. And it's got the cool beachy colors on it. Retro colors. Yeah. FTR is good for that. So, um, alright. Anyway. Um, so now she's into, be careful with the, yeah. Okay. Uh, hi Clyde. Yeah, he's, yeah. I'm telling you, I'm, she's, she's getting more nerdy by the day with me. I know a lot about wrestling. Yep. For someone that's never known that's anything true. about wrestling. Talk about some big fumbles, though. 
all the money that Tony Khan has been spending. Tony Khan. Tony Khan, I look at him and I think, wow, you know, he's older than me, but it would be like if my dad was rich. I'm a lifelong wrestling fan like he says he is. And if I just bought my own wrestling company and said, hey, you know what? I'm buying a company and I'm going to spend a lot of money and I'm going to book it. And that's fine. I mean, that's his prerogative. And of course, we watch this alternative product, but man, he's bringing in some some big names for some high dollar prices. The Okada, Kazushka Okada deal is supposed to be astronomical. Okay? He's getting paid something like, is it four and a half million for four years or something? I don't I don't know. That's just rumor, but I think they fumbled him off the bat. I think they fumbled Okada. Uh, Okada has some 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 aura about him from New Japan. And, of course, he was a sought-after free agent with WWE. They've not fumbled him to the point it's a lost cause, but they fumbled him to the point of, you bring this guy out there, you put him with the young bucks, he does the handshakes, he's a heel. Okay. But then, there's no hype, there's no build-up for his match. They have him fighting that same week on the uh, second-rated show, I guess you could say, of the of the... Of the week at Collision. I guess it would be fair to call that the second rated show. In a jobber match. Fighting with three jobbers. And, um... Yeah. I mean, uh... You're just giving it away, man. Look how look how WWE did Sam, Sam Punk, right? Sam Punk's not fought. He got hurt. He was in Rumble, whatever. They didn't just say, hey, next week, or on our, on our main event show, Sam Punk's gonna come out and he's gonna fight against a rando. And that's the first official match of this huge name that we've signed for lots of money. Um, pretty wild. And then uh, what did they do with Mercedes Monet, right? Sasha Banks, who I used to be a big fan of. I'm not really into Sasha anymore. I don't know. I The big reason I'm not into Sasha, I'm going to be honest with y'all, is the big reason I'm not into Tony Storm. You got a dream job in wrestling. Right? You got a job that everyone watching this video that loves wrestling dreams of. We would all love to be involved in wrestling somehow. Yes, you have some carny, childish booking or whatever. I don't know that I'm allowed to use that word. Chris Jericho says people aren't that aren't in the business. Uh, but you have some, some questionable, funny booking in WWE. You just walk out and leave? It's hard to respect that. Tony Storm did that. Naomi did that. Sasha Banks did that. They just took the ball as JR or Vince, it was Vince, I think, said about Stone Cold back in the day and went home and then go to the competition. I don't know, man. Um, it's hard. And then, not to mention, I've heard how uh, Mercedes has treated fans when they encounter her in public. And, uh, I, you know, again, it's all gossip rumors, but I just slowly stopped becoming less of a fan of hers. It was very flat when she came out this week, I felt like. She was in Boston. Uh, they didn't get the response rating-wise that they wanted, from what I'm hearing. And it just felt like a flat a flat response to me. And supposedly, she's their biggest signee ever. Mercedes Monet and the CEO. CEO. Do you know Sasha Banks, Mama? I don't think Mama's yeah, been watching since. Yeah, I got the fig. Well, they brought her out. She does a CEO thing. And they're saying that she's getting $10 million a year. Tony Khan is... He's putting his dad in a poorhouse. Osprey is doing better than all of them. Osprey's not getting paid as much. I see a lot in Osprey. And I've... Osprey's the opposite. I started out with him thinking, eh, what's, what's there to this guy? And now I'm looking at it thinking, I'm a fan of this dude. His work's good. His promos are good. He seems authentic. Seems like a cool cat. So... Osprey, they're, they're doing good with Pac. I've never... I can respect that Pac has the... Uh, the uh, Or Pac. I guess it's Pac. Um, he's not Tupac. He's, he's Pac. I can respect that he's got the traditionalist. So a lot of people like him for his... Mama probably don't know who this guy is. But, um, but he's just not... Uh, I've never seen 
I don't know. It's just not for me. You know, everybody has their picks and people they like, and he doesn't do much for me. Um, biggest memory I have of Pac is him being as um, Neville, Adrian Neville in WWE. I think he was fighting like Kofi Kingston, and me, my dad had just had a wreck, and it was an ICU. And I remember seeing watching Monday Night Raw from there in his room with him, and that being the match. I don't know. But he did have that cool, what was a red arrow or something? Finisher. I guess he still has it. But anyway, Osprey's the best out of the bunch from, from what I'm seeing. Um, some other things that uh, I got to get into here are the factions in AEW. The booking is senile. I don't care. I wear the shirt. I support the company. But as a fan, I can give my views and thoughts on it. The booking is absolutely senile. And by the way, before anybody chimes in, because this again, this is going to be a controversial video, it's the same same way you would give uh, an opinion on the NFL or the NBA or or uh, NCAA or whatever. You know, if you're a fan and you've watched it forever, you're entitled to that opinion. Everyone's entitled to an opinion, right? Don't mean I'm right; just my opinion. Um, the booking is is senile. It's atrocious in AEW. It makes no sense. Um, you know, it's. One random guy, another random guy. They've never fought. Let's throw them on a match. Throw them on a card. It's a dream match. Everybody's in a faction. The whole thing is in a faction. Tony Khan must have loved factions. This guy's got to be put in a faction. This guy over here, he's got to be put in a faction. It's rando booking. Rando booking. Complete rando booking. Evidence of that was in the, the eight-man tag a while back. Rob Van Dam was in and Samoa Joe and Swerve and whoever else. Random dudes just, of course, there were angles inside of that, but it was still what somewhat, somewhat random. Um, so WWE is not perfect. WWE has, like, the same matches over and over. Nia, Becky, Drew, Jay, I talked about, and even with Cody and Roman. But at least WWE makes sense booking-wise. Yes, it can be boring and repetitive, but it's not completely random and off the wall, and everybody's in a faction. You got Lion Hook. Hook is good. I used to like Hook. I'm slowly starting to lose the 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 fire for Hook or the uh, the will to want to see him because everyone he groups with, oh, we're gonna call it Hookhausen. We're gonna call it Jungle Hook. We're gonna call it Lion Hook. I'm just on a rant today, but it's just it's 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 childish booking is what it is. It's someone that doesn't understand wrestling. Not saying that I do, but I feel like I can at least get a grasp on, on saying this. It's someone that doesn't understand wrestling, booking wrestling. And maybe I'll burn a bridge with Tony Khan. Uh, I, always, I sent him a message a long time ago when AEW first started. And I said, uh, hey man, because uh, I knew he was involved in music too. And he is. And I, of course, was like, you know, I got some music. Would love to see it on wrestling. Incorporate both. Uh, if you, you know, whatever. They were interested in it, and of course I had never heard anything back, but uh, maybe Tony Khan would never want me on AEW. There'd never be a shot after this of coming on, and who knows what could happen, but uh, I'm just giving my honest feedback on it. Um, Willow and Riho, I I I like Riho. Something about her. I'm not going to Jim Cornette her. Riho! I'm not going to Jim Cornette her. I like her. There's something about her. Willow, I'm a fan of. I'm a fan of Willow Nightingale. She's got it. And they're doing good with her. Maybe overexposed a little bit, but they're doing good with her. Um, and Riho, I mean, I, I don't know. Something, I mean, yeah, I know there's um, the Kenny Omega tie-in or whatever, and maybe they're only using her because of this or that or whatever, but I like, I like her. There's something about her. Should that have been the main event, though, of this week, man? Out of all those matches, that stat card... I get they wanted to use Mercedes there in that spot. Probably would have been better just to have her come out at the end of the night. Um, you would have lost your viewers potentially by that point, but maybe not because people would have been anticipating it. And then Statlander doesn't even come out and help her friend. It's her old arch enemy from New Japan, Mercedes, that comes out to save her after the match from the beatdown of Julia Hart and Sky Blue. Doesn't make a lot of sense, booking wise. And I'm used to AEW. Every time I watch it, I know. And every at the end of every match, I know I know a couple things. There's going to be some random thrown together matches. 
There's going to be a ton of factions. And I also know that there's going to be... I also know that there's going to be a run-in. There's going to be somebody get jumped. And then there's going to be somebody else run out and save them. Every match, it seems like. I don't know. That's just my thoughts here this week. I have to say, AEW Big Business was a bust, in my opinion. It was a bust. WWE, uh, just with Sammy and Chad Gable, won the won the week. So, and I, I can't have it. I'm out of the loop on the other company, so I can't comment on them right now. But I can keep showing you, speaking on AEW, look at this Ric Flair card. Look at that right there. Ric Flair. I don't know that I want to take it out of the package. I think I will. I'm going to take it out of the package. They send it. This comes from Upper Deck. And they send it in the plastic there. I got this shortly after the last video. This is his new arrivals card. Which is basically his first card in the company. And I think that's cool. I think that's kind of a special thing. His debut was... I wonder what will happen to Rick now. Right? After the uh, Sting thing. He's gone. What happens to Rick? His debut was October 25th, 2023. And there it is. Let me see if I can just take this out, maybe. Or is I going to make me pull the whole thing out? If you're into card collecting, uh, which I am somewhat into it, somewhat, um, really it's just these kind of cards, rookie cards, cards that, are, you know, Look at that. There it is. Ric Flair. Is that his last trading card ever in wrestling? I mean, it could be, right? So it says here on the back. Height 6'1", weight 243. Born February 25th, 1949 in Charlotte, North Carolina. As a retirement gift from Tony Khan to Sting, Ric Flair made his AW debut at Dynamite in Philadelphia. See, what does that even mean? A retirement gift from Tony Khan to Sting. Ric Flair's here. I signed Ric Flair as a retirement gift to you. I, it's weird stuff, man. But uh, but I'm I'm a huge fan of Ric Flair, no matter where he's at or what he does. And I actually like AEW, by the way. I appreciate the competition I'm wearing. I know I crap on it a lot, but I just love talking about wrestling. Um, you know, from all aspects, especially booking wise. Even though I'm not a booker, and you know, whatever. But you don't have to give your opinion. I just, I just, I enjoy it. It may sound a little negative, um, but it is what it is. I like talking about it. I especially like getting stuff. I got to go on another rant here. Lex Luger. This is an old figure. Look at Lex. He always reminds me of John. I think it's the look on his face. He's real serious. Uncle John. It's for you, John. Shout out. Um, I've had this figure for a while. And it's bulging out here. It's busted, kind of. I got it that way. Uh, but it was only 14 bucks, uh, And I got it that way a few months ago. It's got his little NWO shirt on him. Believe it or not, that NWO shirt is the reason I didn't want to get the figure for a while. Because my favorite version of Lex never included an NWO shirt. Or when he was in the Wolf Pack or whatever. It was just OG Lex by himself. And... I do think he's got a funny face scan. Let me zoom in on this. If you guys have never seen that. Look at that. Does that show? Oh, my God, it's a glare. Um, this one would have been a way better scan right there of him. Almost looks Brian, like, like Brian Pillman kind of. But, um, I, I thought, you know, how many more Lex figures are we going to get? So I guess until a better one comes along, this is my Lex figure. And I'll swap this, trade this out, sell it, whatever. Um, I got this off from a company called Giving It Away on Walmart.com. Which, you know, every, every collector knows if you order from Walmart, Amazon, uh, you get figures like that. They're going to come, you know, busted up, possibly packaged, smashed in. And, um, I'm a big fan of Lex Luger, man. This is, this is like Sting. He was Sting's buddy, so of course I like him. The, the picture showed this, the, the description showed this uh, picture, and then it showed him with orange trunks and the white boots, which is the Lex I wanted. I was willing to take the risk of the chase, right? And I thought maybe, hey, 14 bucks, get a chase, good deal, whatever. 
They didn't say that you might get a chase. They didn't hand out nothing, none of that. I send it, and I, I've already complained about this to my mom. I've put it on a website. I've contacted the seller, blah, blah, blah. I inquired about it after I got this. I said, oh, you know, I was uh, I saw on there that you could have gotten Chase or the orange figure, whatever. I thought, you know, just wanted to, basically just wanted to reach out and see if what kind of possibility that was, get some details after I'd gotten the figure. Just for whatever, whatever's sake. The guy, the company writes me back and says they never had a picture up of an orange trunk chase. And that um, I, I basically I should go check the listing because they sent me what was being sold. And then I get on there and they had changed the pictures that were used for the description and removed the orange trunk chase. Joyce pointed out to me that, and, and she's right, that that's not guaranteed that I'm going to get a chase just because there was one in the orange trunks and there was this one. I get that. But I think it's very shady business practice to change the picture after somebody reaches out about it. So buyer beware on that company. I told them, they're not going to, they said they'll give a refund. I'm just going to keep it. It's 14 buck Lex, but um, shady, shady stuff. And then today, at our actual local Walmart, I finally found a figure. It's Miss Roxy. Back from Ring of Honor days. I don't know how I feel about the gear, though. She It looks like her. she's a referee, but the title, look at that NXT title. That is popping right there. Oh, the Hulkster. Rose's knockoff Hulkster just fell. That's a cool... Um, and I, I the big thing, and I, I, like, I like her. Joy likes her. We got to see her debut uh, in Texas in her home state at the Royal Rumble. There is a bend here on the back. Or, uh, some little dings. But I didn't feel like it was that bad. And I, I would like Chad Gable and Paul Bear out of that set too. Um, I just like... I, I really like people that I really like. I like to get their figs or first time figs. And as far as I know, this is her first time fig. And this is the new box design too, guys. Tell me how y'all feel about the new box design, those of you who collect. Cuts off the legs, which I kind of kind of sucks. You got to peek down in there to see them. Let's show you that top, but I don't know. The day, you know, I don't take figures out of the boxes. So the day when they just completely cover up the figure and it's just a box. Just like the day when they only allow digital games to be played for video games. I'll probably be done collecting, but... Uh, unless I'm just buying them for Clyde to open and smash, but which is probably going to happen with everything here. But um, <laughs> honestly, it's going to end up his anyway. So do what he wants. But I think this is a good figure of Roxy, man. And I, I told you, I just think it's so cool, especially their first figures, which I'm assuming this is. You walk into a store, you just made it, and I guess it's that dreamer mindset of mine. I always loving wrestling, I always loving music. You walk into a store. You see your first figure hanging on the wall. And you're just like, wow, I've made it. I have my own figure. WWE figure just hanging there on the peg. That's when you know you've hit it. So I guess I lived through that to say that's very cool. And that's a cool figure. I mean, that's a cool figure of, of Roxanne. The stripes are a little funny, but there, there you go. There she is. Congratulations. She's cool, man. She was she was even better in Ring of Honor. Now for the main event of the night. This video is still gonna be thirty minutes. I just yapped so long. Complaining about AW. The main event of the night, folks. Drum roll, please. That was a weak drum roll for someone who plays drums occasionally. I like how they put "Do Not Bend" on the box. Miss Rachel shout out here. You never know what you're going to get on these shows. This is from HighSpots.com. My first ever order from High Spots. So shout out to High Spots. And shout out to Purival. Uh, for, I, I saw High Spots, but he always does the High Spot videos. And kind of made me want to try them out too. So I don't have Knifey. I don't know where Knifey's at. I'm going to use a, a kitchen Knifey. <laughs> All right. I've had this sitting here for a while. I thought I was going to wait on some more stuff. Speaking of more stuff, 
Pro Wrestling Tees has us a box coming for, and Claudia Mama's got stuff in it, y'all. Plus the other cool little thing. I, you know I had to get the Sting Micro Brawler, the last one. That won't be here till summer, though. It ships separately. And then uh, the new Pro Wrestling Crate box for this month should ship any time. I got some figures from Target on a gift card I had. They had a big sale. Go on there. They may still have them on some Legends. That's coming. And, of course, RDP Promotions. My people at East Coast Autographs. We got some autographs coming in, so that's some upcoming cool stuff. Now, in this box, I got something real special that I'm going to save till the end. And then I got a mystery. What's going to be first? I don't know. So much. So I got the. This is the I Trust Tommy package, which is the cheapest one. But since uh, we were getting uh, this, almost almost said what we got. Since we were getting this other thing in here, I figured why not? I'm just gonna pull from the box because it's all in there random. So I don't know what we got in here. I thought maybe it would be kind of separated, but they got some good packing. It looks like we got DVDs off the bat. Whoa! Look at that. It's open, but that's okay. Look at this WWF DVD here, folks, of Rebellion, never seen in the USA, Manchester, England, November 3rd, 2001. How cool is that? I love DVDs, so I'm happy to see them. Um, who all we got in here? Rock Austin, Rock Jericho, Undertaker. Mama, we're going to watch this. This will turn her on to some wrestling. WWF.com. I've not seen that in a while. Undertaker, Kurt Angle, Steve Austin, uh, Lita, Tori Wilson, Mighty Molly, Stace Keebler, Trish Stratus, Tajiri, Regal, APA, Hardy Boys, Deadly Boys, Big Show, Diamond, Dallas Page, Scotty Too Hotty, Hurricane, Edge, and Christian. Wow, they had a still cage match. Edge and Christian. Talk about odd timing. With their, uh, they're doing some good stuff. Yeah, it just probably backtracked a little bit. But they're doing some pretty good stuff on AEW. We got Full Impact Pro, Rise of the New Dawn, The Best of CM Punk, World Wrestling Network, and ROH Present, Volume 2. Tommy's picked some good stuff. Look at that CM Punk DVD. Uh, let me see who all I know on here. Anybody? Homicide, James Gibson. Uh, little, 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 little Puma. Brian Danielson, Rocky Romero and Homicide, Brian Danielson and Robert oh, Strong. No. Look at that. That's cool. What else we got here? Oh, we got a couple more DVDs. Who's this? Survival of the Fittest, Night 2, with the boy, Jay Briscoe, right there on the front. I don't think I have this from Pro Wrestling Teams, uh, but another Ring of Honor. That is cool. We got, uh, we got Christopher Daniels on here. Donovan Dijak, Jay Lethal, Red Dragon, Young Bucks, uh, Kingdom, Adam Page, Dalton Castle. That is, that's all right. We got a couple more. They loaded us up with the DVDs. Survival of the Fittest Night 1. We got, we got the Ring of Honor, man. Uh, let me just go Bullet Club. I'm just going to pick a few. Moose. Um... Adam Page. Yeah. And I think there's one more DVD. It is. Best in the world. Jay Lethal and uh, Jay Briscoe right there on the front. Another one here. Let's go through it. Uh, we got... And I, I didn't watch a lot of Ring of Honor. So this... I didn't, I didn't... We didn't get it around here. I'm in the South and we didn't get it. So this is going to be fun. I didn't watch Ring of Honor till later. Or sporadically through uh, what was the company that owned them before Tony Khan? Yeah, whoever it was when they were simulcasted. So Jay Lethal, Bobby Fish, Dalton Castle, DJ Whitmer, Addiction, Motor City Machine Guns. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. What else we got in here? Let's take this out. Oh no. Not do that. We got some bubble wrap. 
So five DVDs. It's pretty good. Tommy, that is pretty good. I don't know how I'm not gonna. I don't know what's what. That's the problem. All right, these are promos. Let's go with these. These are promos. Oh, it looks like it's got some boogers on it. Right from my... <laughs> right from my side. I don't know if there's anything else, because I can't tell. I don't think there is. Let me just double check here. Oh, I guess there is. I'm telling you, High Spots hooks you up, dude. Let's go with this. What's this? I don't know what it is, so we're going to have to open it. It's a flag. Um, normally, I would just look at a spoiler card. We'll, we'll set it to the side here and see. I don't know what that is. I'll wait and open it first. Is this another one? Another flag. We'll open those here after we get through. Let's just say... Does not say what we got in here. Okay, take this out. Okay. There's the packing. And we got some jewelry, I believe. Look at this. You can't see me. Look at this. Bless you. Oh, that ain't gonna fit me. That ain't gonna fit me. Mama, would you wear this out to the mall with me sometime? You can't see me. <laughs> clyde has got it if he wants it. Or maybe Maya. Maya, Maya likes John Cena. So, that's funny. I don't know who this is, but it's a WWF. Look at that old chain there. I don't know. Is that Uso? No, there's no way it's Uso. Oh, it's WWE. Two for 2014. That might be Uso, actually, there. What do you think, Mama? You eyeballing any of this jewelry over there? It just reminds me of, like, didn't we wear those kind of necklaces <laughs> In the 90s? In the 90s? Old school, dude. Big balls. Big balls. Samoa Joe used to wear them, I remember. <laughs> it's a big one. Who's this? I don't recognize this either, but look at that. You get some necklaces, dude. You get some promos. DVDs I love. So that's the three. I'm just going to wear the John Cena for the rest of the video. You can't, I got a fat neck, so it's hard to... And I got my main event in there. I'll show you guys after. Let's go through the flags, I guess. We're almost done. Closing in. Winding her down. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Mama. I know. I'm coming. I'm going to go out. I think. He's done. Oh, okay. So, what flag we got? Oh, boy. Joy. Right for the room downstairs. It's a rock angle. Joy. Mama's gonna Mama's gonna want me to sell this one. It's an impact. We matches this up at Son's house. Look, Joy. That work good in Son's house? He's working on that truck. Velvet Sky. She's working on a little truck, doing a little mechanic work. Probably knows what kind of motor. Huh? Probably knows what kind of motor it is. Whoa. Sorry. Alright. She's got her toots out here on the flag, too. Alright. <laughs> Feet in the air. So there you go, Velvet Sky Flag. I don't know what a, a guy in a what a family can do with that. Give it to give it to my dad, I guess. Uh, they just had the beautiful people on though, so that's kind of cool. Is this another one of the same? The beautiful people. I'll hang that up. Maybe in the closet in there or something. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. All right, promos. You guys ready? We got Tracy Williams. Tracy Williams, Ring of Honor. 
Um, I don't know a lot about Tracy Williams. Um, again, because I didn't watch a lot of Ring of Honor. Um, let's make sure there's nothing else in here. I don't think there is. But um, still cool to get. I'm going to look more into him now that I do have that. And how cool. I think I have this exact same one coming. Uh, so this will probably be for sale. If not, it's a very similar one. That's awesome, man. Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson. The Rock and Roll Express. Legends, guys, right there. And it's even got the Certificate of Authenticity. I may just have to hold on to this one and sell my other one. Um, that's cool. I met Ricky Morton. I've talked about him on the show. And uh, that's all right. That is cool. So there you have it, guys. That's the... Um, that's the that's the show. Oh, and I also forgot the main event. JSA witnessed. Wait, did they put the JSA witnessed here? First, I want to see what kind of condition this is in. It's in rough condition. To be expected. They sold this as a less than perfect. So I get it. It's not in terrible condition. There's no rips. Check this out, guys. They had this on there for a phenomenal price. There's no way I could have passed on uh, for an autograph figure. My boy Michael, Michael Ingram. It's kind of faint, but Alexa Bliss right there. Very cool, huh? So it was a less than perfect. So it was... Um, it was uh, not very expensive. Definitely could, nowhere could you have found an Alexa Bliss for the price signed that this one was anywhere. So that's very cool. Alexa Bliss right there. That's all right. Of course, they had a bunch of them. So she, um, but I think this will, even though it does have the crease back here, this will replace my, of course, it will replace my Alexa Bliss I have. So I have an Alexa Bliss uh, figure for sale. My favorite figure I have of her. Uh, but a signed one's obviously going to take precedence. And you don't need to. So. And it's JSA certified, which is very cool. Just had the JSA card taped on. That's all right, man. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy with this stuff. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, this is my first highspots.com um, video. I'm going to tag them in it and hopefully uh, getting good with those folks. I love the DVD selection. Autographs were very cool. Flags are funny. I mean, look at that. Got some throw-in throw -in necklaces. Um, figures. Uh, don't watch who you get. Watch who you buy from on walmart.com for sure. Um, just not because it's not a good deal, but just because it's, it's a little shady business practices. So what should you get from? Um, and I will have a rock. So out of all this, I will have a for sure. I'll have a Rock and Roll Express autograph for sale. I'll sell it for cheap. Uh, just because that one's going to be the one I'm going to keep. And um, I wanted an 8x10. I, did, I do have one of those coming. So I wanted an 8x10 even though he signed. The, I wanted Robert to be included. So I will have a Rock and Roll Express um, Rock and Roll Express autograph 8x10 coming up for sale look at that certificate of authenticity I want a Robert Gibson So, and then I'll have an Alexa Bliss figure for sale as well uh, so I'll uh, let you guys know about this and um, maybe even have a Tracy Williams at some point I don't know that's cool though to have um, I'm going to watch more Tracy Williams matches I bet I can find some on those DVDs and I got some uh, beautiful people flags. I'm going to find somewhere somewhere to hang it. Mama left the room after I put those. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. This is a lot of fun. It's a release for me to talk about wrestling. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do, thumbs up it. Share it. Get the word out. That's the big thing. Get the word out. Tag your friends in it, whatever. Um, comment, share, like, follow. All the jazz. My name is Chris Ellis. So cool to be here with you guys today. And also, don't forget, um, I'm going to study that Alexa Blair. I, I feel like I trust Tommy. That's a good box.
Maybe next time we'll try a, a even higher end one on high spots for our whenever we do a high spots again. We'll see. I feel like that was a good one though. It was a good box. Um, a lot of good stuff in there, man. I feel like it was worth it. Um, and uh, what else? Share the video. Oh yeah. So uh, I'm going to work up something where we can start doing some giveaways. Uh, maybe it'll be a giveaway of a Rock and Roll Express Auto or an Alexa Bliss figure. I don't know, but we'll see as the channel grows and share the word, get the word out. Um, I want to start doing some giveaways and stuff like that, especially on stuff that's not moving, that is just sitting in my house. I would rather uh, send it on to a fellow collector and get the word out. And um, so, yeah, that's the deal. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I'll say it like Ian Riccoboni says it. Happy wrestling, y'all. Thanks for watching, guys.